Hey, how's it going? I'm Ina Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so last time I said that this one was going to be entitled Adaptations. Um, <clears throat> so as I'm hoping those of you who follow my vlogs know, um, I recently did a The Book Is Better um, for 101 donations. Um, and obviously that's kind of, that did touch a little bit upon the idea of, you know, adapting work and stuff like that. So I kind of want to look at this from two sort of angles. The first is what do I think of adaptations? Um, and the second is um, would I ever want my own work to be adapted um, into whatever form it would be adapted into. Um, so I'm going to start this off with, actually, I'm a very positive person when it comes to adaptation and adapting work. Um, I think, yes, there can be a lot of problems with it. I think, yes, you know, things don't always translate as well when they move from one media to another. Um, but I think, you know, if you don't try then you're not going to know um i also think that you know it can be done really well and you can get some absolutely fantastic adaptations of things um and you know um so obviously you know it can be done badly if you disagree with you know certain changes that were being made and, and certain things like that um i also think that sometimes I don't always necessarily want to read a book, says the writer. <laughs> but I don't always necessarily want to read the book. Um, and part of the reason for that is there are some absolutely fantastic storytellers out there, but their particular writing style isn't a particular writing style that I enjoy to read. Um, and I'm going to say it. I don't like J.K. Rowling's writing style. Um, I'm also, I, I'm, to be fair, I've not really tried to read Tolkien, um, but again, I, I am aware that it's a very sort of wordy kind of style. It can be a bit difficult to sort of get into um, and stuff like that. So there are also like really huge books. I'm not a big fan of really huge books, <laughs> she says, as she's writing some really huge books. Um, but, you know, in, in both of those cases, it's not that they tell bad stories. If anything, they tell really, really good stories. And for a lot of people, their writing style is absolutely you know, wonderful and people get on with it. If they didn't, they wouldn't be successful. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with the stories they tell. There's nothing wrong with their writing style. I don't particularly get on with it. Um, but that's just that's just me. I'm you know, I picked up plenty of books which are supposed to be really, really good books. And I've just not gotten on with the style and have gone like, you know, part way through the first couple of chapters and gone, I, I can't read this. Um, alternatively, there are plenty of books that I really like the writing style of um, and that I actually think are, are better than people give them credit for because I really get on with the writing style, even though it might not be necessarily perfect, even though there are probably a lot of flaws and a lot of plot holes. I'm a bit more forgiving because I get on with that particular writing style. It's, you know, it's an, a particular writing style that I can engage with a bit better. It's a particular writing style that for me flows a bit better. And for me, it makes a bit more sense. But for other people, it doesn't necessarily work as well. That's the reason why there are so many writing styles to begin with. That's the reason why, you know, different writers do different things and there are different genres and there are things like that. So just because you don't get on with a particular writing style does not, 100% does not make it a bad story. Um, all, all it means is that you don't get on with that particular writing style. Um, you don't, you know, like that particular way that thing has been written, but you can still appreciate that it's a really good story. And that's why I like adaptations, because the adaptation allows you to appreciate the story without necessarily having to deal with the writing style. Although, again, you are having to sort of deal with a slightly different writing style because of, you know, translating onto screen, you've got screenwriters and you've got this, that and the other, and you might not necessarily. But visual media, it, it is kind of, it's kind of different again. Um, but again, there are, there, you know, there are certain visual medias that, certain film stars, I can't. 
stick. Um, I'm not a huge fan of um, moving camera, the moving camera, the shaking camera, motion sickness, neck back. Um, but they still might be telling a really good story. And in which case, if the reverse was true and there was a book version of it, I would probably read the book, <laughs> provided I got on the writing style. Um, and that's the thing. When you're adapting something, you might be... You're essentially, you're telling the same story. It might not necessarily be beat for beat the same. It might not necessarily be moment for moment the same. There might be like changes here and there to make it work better for the medium that it is now being delivered in. Um, but you are giving more people an opportunity to find that story and to enjoy that story and to appreciate that story uh, where they might not necessarily have been able to get on with it in the other in another form um, because of that reason. Um, so, like I said, I, I know that J.K. Rowling is a good storyteller because her, her books have translated into good films, um, into a series of films that I can sit and I watch and I can enjoy those. Um, I enjoy the stories, and I know these are based on her stories, and okay, they may not be 100% correct to her stories but she had a lot of influence and a lot of a, of a hand in you know how it looked on screen how it translated on screen and, and stuff like that um, certainly in like the earlier films I'm not sure pretty sure most of the way through she kind of had a definite hand and a definite role so they're definitely her stories um, and you know for me the translation on screen I can I can consume that and I, I can enjoy that and I just don't enjoy her writing style. <laughs> and I have met other people that don't enjoy her writing style. I'm not isolated in this. <laughs> and who also agree with me that they, they know she's a good writer and they know she can tell a good story because, you know, they've enjoyed the films. So I'm not I'm not isolated or alone in, in that kind of um, way of thinking. But it, it, it is why I am pro adaptations. It's why... You know, I am pro the idea of adapting a work into another medium um, so that more people can discover the story and more people can enjoy the story. Um, I, I agree that doesn't always work. Um, I agree that you can get some very flawed adaptations, um, which then end up or result in, you know, certain things not being attempted again and you know people kind of going well that obviously can't translate well into this that and the other rather than going well what were the problems with this particular adaptation could we try adapting it again because certain things have been adapted more than once <laughs> you know I can think of half a dozen things uh like you know Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility that have been adapted more than once um and some of the adaptations have worked really well and others of the adaptations have worked okay but not quite as well or haven't worked at all but the idea that you know in all these cases, there's been, you know, the, the choice to, to sort of adapt and then you know, try a new thing with it and this, that and the other. Um, and then a lot of things that are kind of like, well, it's failed the first time, so it can never work. Um, so it doesn't happen again. So, I mean, I think, you know, adaptations are a positive, for the most part, uh, thing that happens. And it gives more people the chance to discover a story they may not have otherwise been able to come across because either they don't read um that particular style of book um but they might enjoy that style of film because that that's the other thing you know there are types of like the types of books that i'll read and the types of films that i watch are not necessarily the same genre um sometimes they'll have like you know overlapping things and, and, and themes and stuff in common but you know quite often you know, the type of, of film that I'm going to watch is going to be completely different to the type of book that I might sit down and enjoy. Now, not always, not exclusively, but there, there is sort of a divide between my, my happy reading and my happy film watching. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's that as well. You know, some people might, you know, watch a film because it's a social experience and they're going to, to see it with a friend. Um, and they're, they're going because, you know, all their, their group of friends are going and they want to go to the cinema and it, that's something that happens to be on or, you know, reasons like that. Um, whereas a book is a very solo experience. So if it's not within your normal genre preference, then you, you're less likely to pick it up, you're less likely to read it. So, and I'm, I am exclusively here now just saying, you know, book and film are the only adaptations that there are. TV series and, and um, musicals and plays and stuff like that 
also might appeal to certain people more than they'll appeal to other people. They also might make for better adaptations of the text. Um, and, and likewise, you know, when, you know, something has gone from being a, a film to being like the book version of it and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> very complicated train of thoughts. Um, but yeah, so what, what I'm saying basically is for the most part, I think adaptations are a good thing. It provides a wider scope of ways for people to consume the story. Certainly something that's been adapted for TV and for TV series and then for musical theatre or for normal theatre or for radio. You know, having that broad scope of people who could discover and consume this story is a good thing. Um, yes, it's not necessarily going to be the exact same story, but it's going to cover much of the same beats um, and hopefully deliver the same sort of feeling and the same sort of message, which is, you know, the, the important kind of bits of it. Um, so with that said, obviously I'd want my work ad adapted. Um, how it would be adapted, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I, I go through my head quite a lot about, oh, how would be the best way of adapting this? You know, what would this look like? Um, I think one of the reasons that I do sort of, sort of spend time sort of thinking about the, you know, what would this look like if it was adapted? You know, how would this work if it was live action, if it was animated, um, if it was a TV series, if it was a film, if it was a radio production, is so that I can get a feel of how this world is supposed to look and it's supposed to sound. Um, which obviously helps them with the writing process to begin with. So as I'm writing it, I'm already thinking about ways it can be adapted and consumed in other mediums. Um, and, and the whole sort of reason for, for doing that is that it then helps me kind of create the picture and, and create the world and hopefully create more believable characters and hopefully, you know, create a more believable story or a more relatable story in the process or something that, you know, because I, I know my writing style isn't necessarily for everybody. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a good way of broadening your own sense of this is, this is my story world and this is how my story world works. Um, and it's also, a, a, for me, because I don't believe in perfection, a good kind of like reality check and a good kind of way of going, well, this is probably how I would write it. How would this look? How would this work? <laughs> if I had to do it practically. And uh, I'd love, you know, I'm, I'm a very practical thinker. Very practical thinker now. Um, and, 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 you know, that I think was also one of the sort of big things that kind of got to change for the way I sort of think about things um, was, well, if this is being, you know, adapted into live action, how would this situation work? You kind of have to consider these things. They can't just be like these massive, you know, question marks or plot holes or anything like that. There, there has to be some sort of consistency. This can't be a rule of mess X, Y, and Z. It has to always be a rule. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my own thoughts when it comes to uh, adapting my work, which is mentally I'm kind of already I'm trying to envisage what it would be like if it was adapted into this or if it was adapted into that, how it would look, how the characters would be, how they would feel, how the world would feel, because it helps writing the initial thing. Um, I mean, I'm probably never going to have my work adapted. I'm you know, very realistic in, in that idea that you know, I'm never going to get big enough for my work to ever be adapted. But, you know, it doesn't stop me from imagining it. It doesn't you know, stop me from wondering what it would be like if it was. <laughs> um, and as I said, I, I have ge in general a very positive attitude towards adaptations for the most part. Um, I can dislike particular adaptations of things, um, but I can see the benefit of adapting a work. Um, you know, because it, as I said, it gives more people the opportunity to consume a, a story um, in the medium that they, they prefer and the style that they prefer. Um, and that's that's always gonna be a good thing because at the end of the day, you know, culture has this huge element of storytelling to it. And the more ways that a story can get out there, you know, the more ways that people consume and talk about and discuss and, you know, um, 
embody a particular story you know the the longer that story will will last and resonate with people and you know that it, it we live in a culture or in a world culture in a global culture that has always had stories somewhere as a part of it um so you know the the idea of always finding new ways of telling stories always finding you know new ways of, of allowing people to ex, you know, experience and enjoy stories it just it just seems ludicrous not to want that um and yeah okay it's not always going to work there are going to be adaptations that fall flat there are going to be adaptations that don't do justice to the source material but as long as people are trying it means that people still care about the stories you know um and there's, there's nothing worse than a story that people stop caring about <laughs> says the writer um all right okay so next time next time um because between the point in time this is being filmed and i think the point in time this one goes up um i should have finished all the decorating i've got the kitchen left to paint um i was going to do that this morning um I didn't because uh, yesterday cooker was delivered. I had to take the the old double oven out. That was, that was heavy. Um, um, yes, I got help uh, to do that. Um, and my mum and the electrician was a really nice guy. I like my electrician. Um, and I helped get that that down and, and out into my mum's car so she could take it to the tip for me because I don't drive. Um, and I just sort of got to yesterday evening and I was kind of like, I'm feeling kind of achy and tired. My body's not very happy with me right now. Um, and I've got work tomorrow from today. So I was kind of like, well, I don't really want to, to wake up tomorrow morning and do a fiddly bit of painting around the pipes in the kitchen that I know is going to cause my hand to hurt because um, I did when I was doing the undercoat. Um, so I was like, you know what? when's my next day off i've got monday and i've got tuesday off uh so i was like well, i can do it monday i can do it monday and that's like a week ahead so it's all going to be nice and dry and nice and finished and nice and sorted and it'll give me time to sort of rest a bit today and you know, sort, of, sort, of, sort of like we've also got vlogs to film today we've also got the you know gerbils to clean out today i've got this then i've got that and i've got the other to clean out today so i was like i've already got a really full plate um getting up and doing the decorating first thing in the morning is is tiring um and you know i was sort of like you know what i'm just gonna um, i'm just gonna take the day i'm gonna rest I'm gonna work tomorrow and then i'm gonna do the painting on monday um <laughs> anyway enough of a tangent uh so because i plan to finish my decorating tomorrow um not tomorrow on monday um and between now um after that point um and the the point in time where this this world goes up um i'm gonna have a carpet delivered i'm gonna have a carpet laid i'm gonna have a carpet i'm going to have a carpet i don't have a carpet right now I, i've got that's what i've got right now and that is like the the bedroom my little hallway and the living room is just just that everywhere um and obviously you know that's it's, it's all right but it's not fun to walk on <laughs> um it means i can't I've, I've got um i've got some game theory socks i've got like the the long ones and i've got like little little pop socks and i can't i'm i'm scared to wear them at the moment because i don't want them snagging on the non-floor <laughs> i've had non-floor for ages like not not just like you know recently I've, I've had no like proper floor for ages apart from the kitchen um so i've been like and i don't want to wear them because i don't want to i don't want to snag them or anything i don't want to get them ruined um so i i'm really looking forward to having a carpet which i will have by the time this one goes up um so because i'm going to have it by the time this one goes up um my next vlog is going to be her, my last homeownership vlog um where i get to go through and show you guys how the flat's looking um and let me show you like some of the progress videos and photos that i've taken throughout this journey um it's going to take a little bit of editing so it's going to be a little bit of a headache so i'm probably 
just going to film that one next time, um, depending on, you know, how, how everything goes and how, you know, tired I am and how everything else works out, like getting the following vlog done and stuff. Um, I haven't quite decided yet. Um, but yeah, so the, the next one will be the last home membership, uh, which will be like the, yes, I finished all my decorating and this is how everything's looking and isn't it wonderful and yay. Now I can focus on uh, getting the next book ready. <laughs> So I hope you guys out. So I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one. I hope you've enjoyed this one and I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.